At 7 o'clock, we'll call this meeting of January 22nd to order. First item will be the roll call. February 12th. February 12th. I'm reading my minutes. February 12th. Excuse me. Miller? Yes. Flash? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Nichols? Next item will be the approval of the minutes of January 22nd. I move approval of the minutes from January 22nd, regular council meeting. Second. Miller? Yes. Flash? Yes. Williams? Abstain. Shivers? Yes. Next item is I move that we ha hold a public hearing for the annexation of property located at 2977 South Clark. Second. Miller? Yes. Flash? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Schlegel. Yes, Your Honor. We have received a voluntary request for annexation for the property located at 2977 South Clark. To cover the details of the property and map, we will turn to Rita Jackson. The City of Mexico received a petition from La Jolla LLC of Pomara, Missouri, Missouri, requesting annexation of their property located at 2977 South Clark, also known as the Kelly property, into the city limits. At this public hearing, any interested person, corporation, or political subdivision may present evidence regarding the proposed annexation. After a 14-day waiting period, if no objection is filed, City Council will be presented with an ordinance for annexation. This property is located on the west side of South Clark between Hamilton Park Parkway to the north and Kelly, Kelly Parkway <coughs> to the south. All surrounding land is in the city limits. La Jolla LLC's plan is to utilize the site for commercial office space and they have indicated at the planning and zoning meeting held on February 6th that they will use the site for home bank for the construction of a new bank. On January 19, 2018, notices were sent to surrounding property owners and tenants within 185 feet of the requested annexation. City staff received no telephone calls or written correspondence <coughs> regarding the annexation. Section 111D of the Code of the City of Mexico states, however, no general city plan nor zoning ordinance nor any modification, amendment, or revision thereof shall be considered by the City Council unless it has first been submitted to the Planning and Zoning Commission for its examination and recommendation. The Planning and Zoning Commission at their February 6, 2018 meeting made recommendation to City Council to grant approval of the requested annexation. This annexation request is reasonable and necessary for the proper development of the city. The City of Mexico has the ability to furnish normal municipal services to the annexed area. With us tonight, we have Thomas Nelson, a community bank president of Home Bank, and Will Conrad, in-house counsel of Home Bank. City staff recommends that City Council pr proceed with the advertised public hearing, and Will Conrad will be the person presenting tonight. Make a motion to proceed. We have a motion to proceed. Your hearing's already we, open. We are, uh, we're, we are, no, You're we're, open already. It's a public hearing. We're, so, do you want to have... Does anybody out there have something they'd like to say? Step up to the microphone and state your name for a record, please. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Will Conrad on behalf of La Jolla LLC and on behalf of Home Bank. Uh, we have filed our application for voluntary annexation, as you uh, see, and as Rita said, um, we ha are purchasing or have purchased some property that is surrounded uh, by municipal property. Um, we're asking that it be added to the City of Mexico um, and Zone C2, which is also the zoning of the surrounding areas. So I don't know if you have any questions for me regarding that application. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? What is the size of the facility you plan to build? Uh, 
There are some deed restrictions on that area. Um, at this point in time, um, I believe it's going to be under a 5,000 square foot facility, but that may change uh, depending on circumstances. Okay, thank you. Out of court. curiosity, if you when you if you get it um, rezoned, when do you guys think you're gonna get it built? Uh, we hope to start uh, the demolition process uh, sometime this year, and maybe by the end of this year or the beginning of next year is our, is our hope. Further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else out there like to speak? To or against the project? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Do I need a second? I need a second. Uh, second. Okay. Miller? Yes. Nash? Yes. Williams? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Rita. Next item on our agenda is resolutions. And the first item is bill number 2018-06, a resolution adopting residential refuge rates covering anticipated cost of sanitation services beginning April 1, 2018. Reading and passage. Mr. Schlegel. Yes, Your Honor. As we discussed before the meeting started, Your Honor, that uh, on resolutions approval process, uh, uh, we will no longer be required to read the full resolution. It will be just a motion to read title only for the first time and then motion to approve on all resolutions as we move forward. Okay. So with this particular resolution, um, this one is reference the sanitation rates. Uh, each year we set those rates for beginning in April. Um, during the budgeting process, we anticipated that we would see at least a 3% increase. Um, as you will note as we go through this, that is, we were uh, below that. Uh, and primarily, this is a certainly for the uh, contract for collection, uh, household hazards waste, the uh, um, partial uh, uh, for the uh, uh, yard waste, and uh, um, services to run those operations. To cover the uh, summary of the anticipated rates, we'll turn to Roger Haynes. Good evening, Council. Uh, the, in the April of 2014, the City of Mexico ban began a 10-year residential sanitation services contract with Danes Waste Disposal Incorporated, and that contract included annual pricing adjustments that are set to take place April 1st of each year. Staff has taken into consideration residential unit pricing with the services contract along with other operating expenses related to sanitation services provided by the city that are to be properly funded through user fees. Staff has provided to Council a summary of anticipated expenses for the Sanitation Department for the next 12-month cycle beginning April 1, 2018 and running through March 31, 2019. Please note the anticipated cost associated with this increase also includes the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Center and part of the brush yard operations. The net expenses estimated to be recovered by fee equals $599,067. The estimate of $599,067 divided by 4,308 residential accounts equals $139.06 per year per account. That figure divided by 12 month cycles equals approximately $11.59 per month. The $11.59 per month will represent the base rate for sanitation services. Last year's base rate was $11.42, equating to a base rate adjustment of approximately 1.49% between the two 12-month cycles. In addition to this base rate, a fuel cost adjustment is made part of the monthly service cost <coughs> in result to the terms of our contract with Dane's Waste Disposal. Staff recommends that Council proceed with reading the passage of the attached resolution setting the monthly base rate for sanitation services in the amount of $11.59 with a fuel cost adjustment rate cap of $12.36 for the 12-month period beginning April 1, 2018 and running through March 31, 2019. In order for the rate cap of $12.36 to be hit, diesel fuel would have to reach $6.05 per gallon. 
I have provided to uh, council and the public a survey of 15 area communities and their residential rates. Of those 15 uh, communities surveyed, the average rate is $14.45. And I can assure you we provide more services than most of those uh, residents for that rate that we are uh, asking for. I'd be glad to answer any questions. How much did the uh, Dade's contract go up from, from last year to this year? This it actually went up 18 cents, Eight. and we we're asking for a 17 cent increase. Cents. Okay, yes. that was 18 cents a month. Yes, okay. per resident. Per resident. <coughs> okay. Further questions? Okay, I move for reading of. Uh, uh, Bill number 2016-06. By title. By title. Second. Miller? Yes. Lunch? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Bill number 2018-06, a resolution adopting residential refuse rates covering anticipated costs of sanitation services beginning April 1, 2018. Move for passage of bill number 2018-06. Second. <laughs> Miller? Yes. Lesh? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Next item on the agenda is Bill 2018-07, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract of obligation with the Missouri Department of Natural Resources regarding estimated post-closure expenditures for the City of Mexico Sanitary Landfill Permit Z number 0100703. Reading and passage. Mr. Slater. Yes, Your Honor. We have a 30-year uh, post closure requirement on the old city landfill. And as a part of that, we have to make sure we have in place the financial assurance to take care of it. And this is uh, covering that. To cover the details of this resolution, we'll turn to Roger Haynes. In 1998, the city closed the sanitary landfill and began a 30-year post-closure process as required and regulated by the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. As part of the post-closure process, the City of Mexico prepares an estimate of annual and cumulative costs related to post-closure activities and submits the report to the Missouri Department of Natural Resources for approval. This year, staff will submit an executed contract for obligation along with an updated financial assurance instrument to DNR noting a potential post-closure cost estimate of $130,929. As of September 30th, 2017, the city has $154,188 in the post-closure fund and projects receiving into the fund annually $1,540 for the remaining term of the post-closure, which is anticipated to cover estimated expenses for the post-closure. Based on the city's financial assurance instrument to be submitted, the city's standard and poor's credit rating of AA minus and the success of our post-closure funding mechanism, the city will be able to enter into a contract of obligation without being directed to expend funds to purchase an insurance policy naming MDNR as additional insured for estimated post-closure post expenditures. Staff recommends council proceed with the reading and passage of the resolution authorizing the city manager to sign the contract of obligation with the Missouri Department of Natural Resources. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. Ten more years. So say eleven more years. Forward. We actually will have 15. I know that sounds odd when they say a 30-year post-closure, but we have the remaining post-closure term plus what they call five extra years. Is that new math? Yeah. <laughs> Fake math. I make a motion to read bill number 2018-07 by title only. Second. Miller? Yes. Lesh? Yes. Williams? Yes. Yes. Bill number 2018-07, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract of obligation with the Missouri Department of Natural Resources regarding estimated post-closure expenditures for the City of Mexico sanitary landfill. I move for passage of bill number 2018-07. Thank you. Miller? Yes. Lesh? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. 
Next is Bill number 2018-08, resolution of official intent of the City of Mexico, Missouri, towards the insurance of industrial revenue bonds to finance a project for Spartan Light Metal Products, LLC, and authorizing certain actions relating thereto reading and passage. Mr. Slick. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we have... Uh indicated as part of the uh, uh, Spartans projected uh, building and um, additional growth in the community uh, uh, with the intent to issue uh, taxable industrial revenue bonds uh, to assist with the project. They will all be paid for under their financing, through their financing as leads back to them. The city does not have obligation to repay these. They do. And this is our notice of intent to move that process forward. Um, I will turn to uh, Russell Runge to cover more details of the resolution, but to let you know that uh, the additional plan, cost-benefit analysis, bond documents, all of that will be forthcoming. This is just the resolution of intent to get the process started. So. Evening, Council. Uh, as Bruce mentioned, the, uh, and Council is aware, the city of Mexico does intend to issue taxable industrial revenue bans in a principal amount not to exceed $110,000 <coughs> to finance the cost of the proposed Russell, industrial $110 million. $110 million. <coughs> million dollars. <laughs> I left three zeros out. <laughs> Uh, project for the benefit of Spartan Light Models. Uh, the bonds will be issued pursuant to the provisions of uh, state statute. Uh, Gilmore and Bell uh, has prepared the plan for uh, the industrial development project and cost-benefit analysis to satisfy requirements of the act and to analyze the potential costs and benefits, including uh, the related tax impact of all affected taxing jurisdictions of using industrial development bonds to finance the project and facilitate abatement of ad valorem taxes on the bond finance property. The Act authorizes cities, counties, towns to issue industrial development bonds to finance the purchase construction Extension and improvements of warehouses, distribution facilities, research and development facilities, etc. Revenue bonds issued pursuant to the Act do not require voter approval, voter approval and are payable solely from revenue received from a lease of the project. The municipality issues its bonds, and in exchange, the benefited company promises to make lease payments that are sufficient to pay the principal and interest on the bonds as they become due. Thus, the municipality merely acts as a conduit. Concurrently, with the closing of the bonds, the company will convey title to the site on which the industrial development project will be located and the equipment included in the project. At the same time, the municipality will lease the project site, the improvements thereon, and the project equipment back to the benefited company pursuant to the lease agreement. The lease agreement will require the company acting on behalf of the municipality to use the bond proceeds to purchase, construct, and equip the project. Under the lease agreement, the company typically, one, unconditionally agrees to make payments sufficient to pay the principal and interest, two, agrees at its own expense to maintain the project, to pay all taxes and assessments with respect to the project, and to maintain adequate insurance. Three, may at its own expense make certain additions, modifications, or improvements to the project. And four, may assign its interest under the lease agreement or sublease the project while remaining responsible for payments under the lease agreement. Covenants to maintain its corporate existence during the term of the bond issue. And six, agrees to identify the municipality for any liability the municipality might incur as a result of participation in this transaction. Spartan Light Metals Products intends to construct an approximate 75,000 square foot die cast manufacturing facility located adjacent to the facility. Uh, by September 2019, the company intends to install die-cast machines and related equipment within the project improvements and the company's existing manufacturing facility between 2018 and 2022. The portion of the real estate located upon which the project improvements will be located is referred to as project site. The project improvements and the project equipment are collectively known as the project. Tax abatement described herein applies solely to the project. Uh, that is discussed further within the documents. Construction of the project improvements is expected to cost approximately $20 million. The acquisition of the project equipment is expected to cost approximately $90 million. 
excluding uh, freight and installation. The company will convey title to the project site and the project equipment to the city. The city will lease the project site, the project improvements to be constructed thereon, and the project equipment to the company. The lease payments will equal the principal and interest of the bonds. Under the terms of the lease agreement with the city, the company will have the option to purchase the project at the termination of the lease. The lease between the city and the company will terminate in 2033, unless terminated sooner, sooner uh, pursuant to the terms thereof. The bonds will be payable solely for the, from the revenues derived by the city and the lease or other disposition of the project. Staff determined that it is necessary to declare the official intent of the city to finance the cost of the project from the proceeds of the bond subject to certain terms and conditions as set forth in this, forth in this resolution. And as council is aware, uh, with answer foresight and an agreement to, to do this, pursue this, uh, this project may not have happened in Mexico. Uh, you guys have any questions? This is similar, you know, same type of financing we've done for, for graphs, um, home decorators, um, soft, soft surroundings. surroundings. So some of the community taxing organizations, are actually all of them will receive some benefit immediately That's from correct. this project once it's, once it's completed and going. It's not a 100% tax abate. Correct. And the current taxes they're paying, which are significant, will continue to be paid. Thank you. Under Section G, 2 and 3, Russell, is that where our abatement schedule is? Uh, let's see. I don't have it. You can read mine if you want. That's in part of the yeah, plan three. you're reading? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Page 4. Page, Page 3 four. and 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Okay. Let's play to the board. <coughs> Do you I move for reading uh, bill number 2018-08. Second. Resolution mm, by title only of a resolution of official intent. Do I need, do I need to do that? Just the bill number. Just the bill number 2018-08. Second. Second. Miller? Yes. Lash? Yes. Williams? Yes. Sugar? Yes. Now you read Bill number 2018-08, resolution of official intent of the City of Mexico, Missouri, toward the issuance of industrial revenue bonds to finance a project for Spartan Light Metal Products, LLC, and authorizing certain actions relating thereto. Reading, I mean, I'm looking for a passage of bill number 2018-08. Second. Miller? Yes. Lash? Yes. Williams? Yes. Sugar? Yes. Item D, Bill Number 2018-09, a resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, stating intent to seek funding through the Federal Recreation Trails Program and authorizing the City Manager to pursue activities in an attempt to secure funding. Mr. Schleck? Yes, Sean. Mm -hmm. Under the uh, uh, Federal Service Transportation Act, we have the ability to apply for some grant funds to assist in uh, maintenance of the trails um, and to cover what we're uh, looking at and doing. We'll turn to uh, Chad Schumacher. Thank you, Bruce. Good evening. Uh, these federal funds are um, uh, issued through the Missouri Department of Natural Resources, but it's a typical federal grant. Um, comes with uh, lots of carrots and sticks and hoops. One of the particular hoops of this particular grant is that we have to have a resolution from the council stating that if we are awarded this grant, um, the council intends to accept it and complete these projects. Uh, it's a little unusual, but um, we're not eligible for these funds if we do not do that. That's why we're coming to you before or there's actually any kind of grant award or anything at this point. So um, there are still some engineering um, hoops to jump through uh, that probably won't get jumped through until we actually are awarded the grant, which would probably be sometime in August. Um, 
So uh, what this basically does is it allows us to um, take the money we had budgeted for uh, repairs to culverts on Green Estate this year, which if uh, um, which would be our, our third year of a four-phase project um, to um, uh, repair all those culverts that are collapsing out there at the Green Estate. It allows us to take that $30,000 and do this year and next year's um, uh, culvert repairs at Green Estate, which finishes that prog program. It allows us to do repairs to the trail at Lakeview, which we have about 600 feet of concrete needs to be repaired there. It allows us to finish the concrete walking trail at Dorcas, and it allows us to replace the um, lighting at uh, Lakeview with uh, LED instead of the quartz halogen, which we think will solve some of our lighting problems there that we've fought with for a few years. So, um, uh, basically, we're able to take $30,000 in this year's budget and move four projects that are on our five-year capital plan into this year or the beginning of next year, depending on how the, the grant funding round comes out, and then I'll wipe those things off our project list so that we're able to come up with monies to do other projects sooner, um, like uh, some of like uh, Ms. Craddock was talking about uh, a couple of meetings ago. Um, some of those things that are on our list would be able to move up um, if we can knock off projects that are on our existing list. So, uh, staff is recommending that uh, uh, council proceed with reading this and uh, signing past the attached resolution authorizing the city manager um, to uh, uh, sign documents and seek the funding through the federal recreational trails program. Do, do you have any idea how much we would be requesting? Are we talking about a million dollars? No, it'll be about one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Of which thirty thousand will be our cash. So the total project will be around one hundred fifty thousand. Total project. Total project. Um, it could get larger than that because we're allowed to use in kind um, match also. Um, if when we get into the final phases of this, uh, when we uh, still waiting on a few engineering numbers to come in this week, if we can come up with some matching money and get our match up to some, sorry, some matching labor uh, for things like like for my administration, the grant, and things like that. Um, if we could get that number up to 30%, we can get one more point on our scoring on the grant evaluation. Um, so we're, we're still massaging some of those numbers, but um, our, our cash maximum would be the $30,000 we already have budgeted. So... I think it's a great thing to get a grant. I'm just confused why Dorcas Park made it above a lot of other things, considering that it's out of pretty much all the parks. I mean, it's pretty much a neighborhood park. doesn't use much, and you're talking about three times as much concrete as the other two combined. Well, uh, so it, it's it's a walking trail, so it's a much narrower uh, structure, and um, the these funds are only el there's only certain things these funds are eligible for, and so you know we went and looked at things that were on our long term plan, and you know made a list of the things that were eligible for these funds, and that's kind of how it gets moved up there, Chris. Uh, there's a lot of things we'd like to do and need to do that we can't use this money for. We, would, we didn't think about doing something, add more trail at Green or at Lakeview. Or, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, we actually, like the we majority did look at, of the money is going to be sent, spent at a park that is not a, I mean, it technically the, is a community park. The but, majority of the dollars by, by our engineering costing will be at um, uh, uh, Lakeview and Green Estate. Um, that that project looks it looks longer, but it's less far less volume than the other two, uh, as far as what it takes to actually achieve it. So, because it's so much narrower and it's a thinner profile um, cross section, because it's, the concrete's not as deep, you know, yada yada. So um, but we did look at or? we did look at connecting we did look at connecting um, the the Lakeview Trail along the lakeside down below the the um, uh, uh, playground the new playground that we're constructing and, and coming through there that's something we looked real hard at and you know we looked at surface crossings to Green Estate and stuff like that and it just wasn't enough money to get those things done. Cheryl's pleasure. Move for reading of Bill Number 2018-09. Do we have to say by title only? Since we're only reading the title, have to say that by title only. Okay, that's what our lawyer says. <laughs> Second. Miller. Yes. Lash. Yes. Williams. Yes. Show. Yes. Bill number 2018-09, a resolution of the City of Mexico, Missouri, stating intent to 
seeking to seek funding through the federal recreational trails program and authorizing the city manager to pursue activities in an attempt to secure funding move for passage bill number 2018-09 second miller yes Lesh. yes williams yes shivers yes Next item is bill number 2018-10, a resolution accepting the conveyance of a right-of-way and temporary construction easement for the Whole Street sidewalk improvement. Mr. Schleichel. Yes, Your Honor. As part of the uh, Holt Street uh, reconstruction project, uh, uh, we're going to need some temporary easements from some of the uh, temporary and some permanent, actually, I should say, easements as part of uh, the from the uh, adjacent property owners. And to cover the details of what we're trying to do here, and we'll turn to Kenzie Russell. With the Holt Street project, uh, that funding is through the federal highways, and uh, that does uh, require that we upgrade the sidewalks to uh, meet the Americans with Disabilities standards. One of the issues we have is power poles that set immediately behind the curb and restrict the amount of width uh, to be able to get around them. So uh, we're requesting from the property owners where the power poles are located a two foot wide and typically 18 foot long permanent easement. And then throughout the project are some temporary easements in order to make driveway adjustments, uh, slopes and, and things of that nature along the way. Uh, we have a, a approximately 22 property owners uh, that we're dealing with there. So these nine represent just a little less than half of the properties. Uh, we held an information meeting, a neighborhood meeting at the Handy Shop on January 23rd. A uh, number of the neighborhood uh, made that meeting uh, and, and reviewed the plans with us. Uh, we are recommending or asking for acceptance of these conveyances of uh, permanent right-of-way and temporary construction easements so we can get them recorded and get them in the record before a piece of property sells or uh, some other ownership transaction would take place that would require us to have to go back uh, and, and uh, get it again from a new owner. Uh, so uh, that's, we, like I say, we've gotten about half of them. We're proceeding uh, with contacts on the rest of them. Uh, the neighborhood uh, has been uh, very cooperative, and in case of these nine, all of them have donated uh, the requested uh, right-of-way and easements, uh, I think recognizing the value of the project to the neighborhood. And so uh, thus far, it's, it's been a good process, and uh, we recommend acceptance. Questions? Charles Blake. Make a motion to read bill number 2018-10 by title only. Second. Miller? Yes. Lesh? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Bill number 2018-10, a resolution accepting the conveyance of right-of-ways and temporary construction easements for the Holt Street Reconstruction Project. Move from bill number, passage of bill number 2018-10. Second. Miller? Yes. Lesh? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Next item under new businesses uh, or is an ordinance, 2018-11, uh, an ordinance adopting and enacting a new code for the City of Mexico, Missouri, providing for the repeal of certain ordinances not included therein, providing a penalty for the violation thereof, providing for the manner of amending such code, and providing when such code and this ordinance shall become effective. Mr. Schlegel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as you remember, council held a work session in uh, on September 25th of 17 uh, to review the uh, proposed city code. And then a public hearing was held on November 13th to gather uh, citizen input on the proposed recodification. <coughs> 
during that process, as you remember, um, there was uh, a number of different items that was brought up regarding spelling and corrections and changes and and uh, all of those uh, uh, that we have found, I guess you'd say, and have consensus on. We've got are now in there. Um, Marcy has the updated pages to change in and out of your books. So the books that you received, if you bring those back in, she'll replace those pages or she can give you the pages to change them in and out to make sure yours is up to date once we get this done. Um, as you know, it was uh, 1988 was the last time we did an update of the code, which is 30 years. And uh, so during that time, there was and has been a lot of changes in state rules and regulations. And, and so now we've tried to incorporate all those. Am I sitting here saying today that we have them all fixed? No, I don't think so. I'm sure as we now have read it, even since then, we see a few other things we probably should have done. That's the supplemental process that will come forth as we move forward now with the new code, if it's approved. Um, as we work through it, we, I'm sure we'll find other things that still need to be dealt with and uh, uh, and changed as we go. And it is a living document, and, and that's just part of the process. But we've come a long ways from, uh, like I said, from fixing all the major updates uh, uh, as time's gone on. We've uh, got the uh, clerical errors and the minor changes that we talked about and, and changed those issues. So we think we're as close now as we have been, I guess you'd say. So at this time, we'd recommend that Council proceed with two readings by title only and pass each of adopting and enacting the new city code uh, for the City of Mexico. Refresh my memory. This is on the website, is that correct? Yes, it will be. It will be. It, it, it was? Um, the, the old one is, is currently there, but upon the adoption, the new one is either. Okay. And we did have the proposed one on there at one, as well. Yes. So, and now we'll take them both down and this new one will go up. Charles Blazer. Okay, I move for first reading of Bill Number 2018-10. I mean, oh gosh, Bill Number 2018-11. Second. Miller. Yes. Yes. Flash. Yes. Williams. Yes. Shepard. Yes. Um, Bill number 2018-11, an ordinance adopting and enacting a new code for the City of Mexico, Missouri, providing for the repeal of certain ordinances not included therein, providing a penalty for the violation thereof, providing for the manner of amending such code, and providing when such code in this ordinance shall become effective. Move for second reading of Bill number 2018-11. Second. Miller? Yes. Flesh? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Bill number 2018-11, an ordinance adopting and enacting a new code for the City of Mexico, Missouri, providing for the repeal of certain ordinances not included therein, providing a penalty for the violation thereof, providing for the manner of amending such code, and providing that such code in this ordinance shall become effective. I move for passage of Bill number 2018-11. Second. Miller? Yes. Flash? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Okay, the next item under other business, staff report approval depository of banking services. Mr. Slegel. Yes, Your Honor. Each, uh, every four-year period, we do uh, seek proposals from area banks to be the main depository and bank for the city. And uh, we review those proposals. And to cover the details, we will turn to Roger Haynes. On December 6, 2017, requests for proposals were sent to Mexico area banks and advertised in the Mexico ledger for depository banking services for a four-year period to start April 1, 2018, running through March 31, 2022. Proposals were received from Commerce Bank, Central Bank of Audrain County, First State Community Bank, and Martinsburg Bank and Trust, now known as the Bank of Missouri. The proposal consisted of three parts, services provided, fee for services, and the interest rate to be paid on the collective balances on all city accounts established. 
proposals for calculating an interest rate varied in method from bank to bank and in some cases by the type of accounts established. A number of investment balances and interest rate scenarios were utilized to make comparison of interest that would be earned from each financial institution based on their respective method of calculation. Since the financial institutions utilized differing bases for calculating investment earnings, staff believed it important to spread the investment analysis over a similar period of time as the bid entails rather than taking a one-month snapshot. Staff selected historical investment rates that would have been used by the financial institutions to calculate investment earnings rates during the months of June and December from years 2012 to 2017 plus January of 2018. Staff also prepared an investment earnings analysis based on various short-term rate movement scenarios involving the upward rate trend using the 91 T-bill rate and the federal funds reserve rate based off of the first week of January 2018, and Council can refer to the spreadsheets for those calculations. Based on analysis of investment rate proposals received, services provided, associated fees, and financial strength, staff recommends the bid package to be awarded to Martinsburg Bank and Trust, now known as the Bank of Missouri, to be the overall best bid and recommendation from the city. Under their proposal, the city will not incur any bank fees, check order fees, or deposit slip supply fees, and they guarantee a rate of 2.25% of with no minimum balance requirement. I'd be glad to answer any questions. You sure 2.25 isn't supposed to be 0.25? I called. You bet. <laughs> yeah. I'm moving my money yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> I, I looked at it and I came skipping out of my office and my staff looked at me, what have you smoked? Yeah. And, <laughs> and so yes, I did call. I looked at that and I started thinking. <laughs> okay. Pleasure, you guys. Our questions. Apparently, Martinsburg Bank must think that rates are really going up. Mm. Put this rate on the line. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that could be certainly a factor, and we've been hearing that in the news here lately. And, of course, the Missouri Bank may certainly want to make a, a statement not lose that account, with today, I think, being their official day yeah. of being known as the Bank of Missouri. Mm -hmm. Looks good to me. I mean, that's one my farm. Yeah, I move we accept the uh, proposal by Martinsburg Bank uh, for our deposit Tory and banking service. Second. Miller. Yes. Lush. Yes. Williams. Yes. Shippers. Yes. Next item: approval of the claims. Make a motion to pay the bills. Second. Miller? Yes. Blush? Yes. Williams? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Next item, comments from the council, and we'll begin with Mr. Ron Lesh. Well, thank you, Roger, for going through all those numbers. <laughs> That's a lot of a lot of numbers there to go through and a lot of assumptions. So thank you very much for doing that <coughs> for our city. And how do we do with the ice over the weekend? And this, and today, I saw a truck go by today. I think pretty well. Uh, it, ice is much more difficult to manage than snow. Uh, we had uh, anticipated and pre-treated uh, roadways and, and intersections and. Uh, we worked uh, Saturday night and, and Sunday to add additional chemical. Uh, once the temperatures really came up and the sun popped out, it seemed to work pretty well. I think for the most part, we've got dry streets this evening. Thank you. Um, Chris. How much salt can we end up using? Out of our for the year we have used about 70 tons uh, we start starting the winter with 150 tons about half. so we're, we're roughly halfway through our stockpile yes. 
only thing to remind everyone next Monday, I believe, is when they you get to maybe do your resolution again at MLK breakfast or anything. I haven't heard a thing about it. Have you, Marcy? We had an email from Jay today. And the new Monday. Next Monday. Monday. Okay. Uh, Mr. Slagle. Yeah, I just again remind council now that we have done the official approval of the code. If you've got your books, Marcy will update them for you, or we can give you the supplements. She has them, and you can update your own. It's change this page out for this page, and so. But we do need to make sure they are updated. So. Okay. And I'm going to be quiet because I'm hoarse. So that's now time for public comments. If you'd like to make a comment, please come to the podium and ask you to state your name and address and try to hold your comments at three minutes. Seeing no one, I move we adjourn into executive session presented to Missouri Revised Statute of Missouri 610-021. Second. This case is Yes. Yes. Williams. Yes. Shivers. Yes. 